If you go to Steam's Otome game section and look under top rated games, the first thing you will see is... Well, depending on the day, it kinda changes, but you'll see one of three titles. The first is Cinderella Phenomenon, and rightfully so, the game is free and amazing, so go play it if you haven't, here's my video on it. The second game you might see is Amnesia Memories, and the third is a title called My Vow to My Liege. It's a newer game that came out in September of last year and already has overwhelmingly positive reviews, so I thought I'd give it a try and see what all the fuss is about. Booting it up is enough to give you a great first impression. This game is beautiful. It has vibrant colors, unique backdrops, clean and expressive character art, and most importantly, very hot guys. It shows a lot of polish and effort, which gave me high hopes. The atmospheric music kicked in, and I was ready to play. When starting the game, however, there was a pretty dramatic turn. First things first, the game asks you to give a sacred vow not to spoil the game past chapter 4. Which makes my job a whole lot easier, because explaining the plot of this game would involve teaching you history, wartime strategy, Chinese mythology, and politics. And I am neither an expert in those subjects, nor do I have time to become one. Instead, I'm going to give you the premise and then give you an overall review so you know if it's worth your money. So, the premise. You are the daughter of the King of Ning. Ing. Ng. Wu? This is Wu? My American brain is very confused. So you're the princess of Wu, and five years ago your family tried to kill God by using an ancient ritual involving the sacred ding. Unfortunately, the dragon god is too powerful and starts killing off all your soldiers and the entirety of the Shi clan. The Shi clan is a, a clan of priests and priestesses that are also powerful mages, and one of your best friends, uh, Zhi Yiguang, uh, this guy, uh, is the son of the head priest and priestess and the most powerful mage anybody knows, and they work for your dad and want to stop God too, so they're all here. Along with all of their deaths is the deaths of your three older brothers, the youngest of which was named Fu Chai. This will be important later. Seeing as the dragon god is not being killed, the head priest and priestess instead work together with the king to seal the dragon god into the ding. Oh, and the dragon god isn't really a god, but some sort of malevolent creature that made a deal with your ancestors that the kings of Wu would bind themselves to serve him to serve heaven. But really, it was a trick, and instead the dragon eats the life energy of the kings until they die and then consumes their soul, which is why your family now is trying to kill him, and also why you have this cool flower tattoo magic thing on your chest that slowly turns black as you approach death. Anyway, the dragon is sealed into the ding, and you go home, the only living child of King Helu. Because this is ancient China, the king decides you must continue the bloodline and also maintain the throne, so you take on the name of your brother Fu Chai and pretend to be a man. Two years later, the king dies, your extended family try to take over the kingdom and fail, and you become the king of Wu. Also, Wu fought a war with Yue and won, so you've been holding the king of Yue as a slave, and now he watches over a grave and the temple that houses the Ding. Which maybe isn't the best idea, but he's there and you became friends with him in the past because you lost the jade fish and oh, right, I have to explain the jade fish. Uh, the jade fish is a magical- Basically, you're king now, everything sucks, and you're probably gonna die. Yeah, the prologue in the first few chapters make the tone of this game very apparent. This is not a cute game. This is a very brutal and serious game with heavy story. There is blood, death, betrayal, and some sexual assault in this title. I wouldn't say it goes so far that it becomes traumatizing, obviously nothing is shown, but this isn't a heartwarming adventure with magic and whimsy. It's a bit dark. And very clearly steeped in Chinese history and culture. This whole game takes place in an actual period of Chinese history in the actual kingdoms that existed with some of the actual events that occurred. The Kingdom of Wu did fight with the Kingdom of Yue, and the king was taken as a slave and then later released. The King of Wu was Fu Chai, though he was not secretly a woman, and four of the five main male leads are based on real people involved in those events. Including Zixi, who was a really cool woman and one of ancient China's four greatest beauties. You should definitely look her up. 
There obviously are some creative additions and liberties with this game, but it is very interesting to read about the actual history afterwards and to see where some of the game's characters and story come from. This does present a unique challenge to anyone unfamiliar with China, though. I'm not gonna lie, it took me a bit of time and some googling to keep up with all the concepts and words the characters were throwing around. Words like ding don't have an English counterpart. Concepts like the magical array aren't real, and names like Wu Shu were just impossible for me to pronounce, so it took some extra effort to really understand, and I foresee this being an obstacle for other native English speakers with little Chinese knowledge. But how is it as a game? And more importantly, how is it as an Otome game? And that's hard to say. To be honest, this isn't much of a game. You do get choices, but they're sparse and not always that impactful. In the beginning, you actually get a decent amount, but they're just for determining which love interest you're going to end up pursuing, and they're pretty easy choices like determining which guy you're going to visit or who you agree with. Once you are locked into a route, however, the choices become almost non-existent. For example, once you enter this guy's route, you get two choices. Two. And this guy also only has two choices. And this guy basically has two choices because four of his five choices are all in one dream sequence and only determine if you pass or fail the dream. So you don't really play much, and the story really moves in one direction regardless of what choices you do make. The only thing you influence is the romance part of the story, which then leads to determining how happy of an ending you get. So let's talk about that romance, shall we? I'm going to start with Gojian because that's who I got first, even though I was going for Yi Guang because... Duh. He's the king of Yue, and honestly that alone makes this the best route. You're enemies, but you grow a strong friendship before he learns you are the king holding him prisoner. All the romanceable guys start as your friend, so this is the only one where there is real tension between you and your chosen love interest. If you like Romeo and Juliet romances, this is the guy for you. Chang Feng is the best friend who has loved you all along, but also he's so obvious with his love that nothing exciting really happens. I didn't even get a kiss CG art, and I got his best end. It's just a little bland for me. But if you like best friends, unwavering devotion, and angst, this route might just be for you. Yi Guang should be my favorite because, duh, but actually, look, he's perfectly fine. Which is my problem. He's perfect. He's a powerful mage. He's incredibly kind. He knows all the mythology by heart. His jade amulet can do practically anything the plot needs. He's madly in love with you from the start. He's a doctor. He's a fighter. Basically, he can do no wrong, so the story just becomes Fu Chai asking Yi Guang what to do over and over and over again, or if he can use magic to somehow solve their problem. If you like strong, hot men solving all your problems, this guy is for you. And Wu Zishu. Look, he's 37. Fu Chai is 18 at best. I didn't play this route because it just isn't my thing. Maybe he's the best guy and his route is the most romantic. Or maybe it's the worst and you're forced to marry him because of politics. I don't know and I don't care to know. And what about the protagonist? What about Fu Chai? Honestly, they're good, but not great. At least for me. Fu Chai certainly has more agency in her story than most Otome protagonists, but she still suffers from reactionary storytelling. Basically, most plans or actions Fu Chai takes are usually because one of the main characters has suggested or forced those plans of action on her. And that coupled with the fact that her main motivation in this entire story pertains to the responsibilities given to her by her father, it, she just doesn't have a lot of personal wants that she goes for. She obviously takes an active part in each plan, so she isn't a dead weight, but that plus the fact your choices don't impact anything important in the story just make her feel less involved than she actually is. So what do I think overall? 
I think this is an interesting story told with great detail and care, and if you are into more serious stories and like or even have an interest in Chinese history, this would be an excellent addition to your Steam library. It has action, mystery, drama, and a pinch of romance to make this an engaging read, not to mention it looks and sounds great. If you want a more traditional Otome experience with a fluffy premise, impactful choices, and a focus on romance, this isn't for you. And that's okay, because I see this as being perfect for the people it is for. You should just know if you're in that group before you drop 10 bucks on it. And that's it. My time with my liege has come to an end, and it is now time to set sail to brighter waters. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I'll see you in the next heart-throbbing adventure. Bye bye